So we're, uh, we're here today to provide an update on our efforts to effectively distribute the $1.2 billion uh, that Oklahoma has received through the, uh, the CARES Act, the Coronavirus Relief Act. Um, we just finished our first meeting with the CARES Act Legislative Advisory Committee. Uh, we were walking them through the process uh, that we're gonna follow on how to distribute this money across the state. Uh, we also form the CARES Forward team. Uh, that includes experts from every, every major sector uh, that has been affected by COVID-19. Uh, these folks uh, will play a critical role in maximizing the opportunities for investing federal dollars in relief uh, and forward planning and on ensuring the money is spent in compliance uh, with the law and, and the guidance provided by the uh, United States Treasury. I'm also excited to announce we are one of the first states uh, to officially launch our online portal uh, for our state agencies, our cities, our counties uh, to submit requests uh, for reimbursements. Uh, this platform uh, will also allow us to effectively and transparently process reimbursement requests uh, and get help to communities in need of financial relief uh, for any COVID-19 uh, related expenses. Right now, we are asking all cities and counties who have COVID-19 related expenses uh, to set up an account so they can submit reimbursement requests and carefully review uh, the guidance from the U.S. Treasury. To be eligible, these expenses must be caused uh, by COVID-19 uh, they must have occurred between March 1st of this year and December 30th uh, and cannot have been um, in the budget as of the end of March. Our goal is to formally begin processing these requests uh, by June 1st. Uh, our mission is to maximize all federal dollars available during this unprecedented time and to ensure this money is spent with integrity on COVID-19 related expenses, emergencies, and pandemic uh, preparedness. The members of our federal delegation have worked tirelessly uh, to get these uh, funds across the finish line. And I wanna personally thank our federal delegation for all their hard work uh, that they're doing for the state of Oklahoma uh, in Washington, D.C. on behalf of, of the citizens of our state. Uh, Congress awarded this money to the states uh, with the expectation uh, that governors would work with local communities to ensure these dollars were distributed quickly uh, and on target. And I would like to thank the Oklahoma Municipal League and the Association of County Commissioners of Oklahoma who have been coordinating and maintaining a list of reimbursement requests uh, so that we can be prepared for rapid coordination and payment as soon as possible. Uh, I'd also like to thank our mayors, our city managers, our city councils, all the county commissioners uh, across the state who we've been working with uh, as a team. They've been working really hard uh, to support their local communities. I've actually uh, I've got a couple of them up here with me today, so I'd like to turn it over and I've asked the mayor of Lawton, Oklahoma, uh, Stan Booker, uh, to give some comments from a municipality standpoint. So, uh, Mayor, we'd like to have you come up here and share with us. All right. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much, Governor. And it's an honor to be here today. And we appreciate the partnership that we have the, with the state governor and the good communication that we have as well. That's always appreciated as we work towards putting the infrastructure in place um, for the CARES Act, making it efficient and accountable. Uh, today we met with the governor and spoke with members of his team about the COVID-19 and the impact on communities and our ability to deliver core services. Probably some of the busy, biggest examples of expenses that we've had has been an increase in overtime related to first responders as well as the expenses for PPE. But one uh, another big element in our ability to deliver those core services, especially associated with public safety and health, is the um, disruption of the retail industry where we'll receive less uh, sales tax income 
going forward and the uncertainties associated with that. We also spoke about the state's timeline for processing the CARES Act reimbursements and I've seen the website and it looks very user friendly and I appreciate that. Uh, the state has said that they're committed to reviewing our requests and getting funding deployed as quickly as possible and I can tell you my experience with this governor is things move fast and I appreciate that governor. Um, we're not out of the woods on this COVID-19 thing yet and it's important that we continue to do the things like wash our hands that businesses continue to sanitize often and leave the uh, safety protocols in place that have been put in there by the governor and by the municipalities. Another thing is that social distancing thing is very important. And I have to believe that su the success that we've had in changing behavior has really made a difference. And I think the chart that I look at most often is on hospitalizations in the state and they just continue to decline and we continue to show the rest of the nation how to do it right here in Oklahoma. Uh, this virus will continue in our communities and I look forward to working, the city of Lawton looks forward to working with the state through the governor concerning uh, new testing methods that will be brought forward and even in Comanche County and our hospital is working in a Mayo Clinic trial as we work for uh, new ways to understand plasma therapy. And we're excited about that, being involved with that Mayo Clinic trial. Uh, so Governor, thank you for having us here today. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for your leadership at this crucial time in our state's history. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Cleveland County Commissioner, Rod Cleveland. Thank you, Governor, for, uh, for having the uh, having me here today and uh, and the work that you do with county commissioners um, you've done that uh, one thing that I want to let you guys know Cleveland County has been one of the hardest hits uh, of the of all the counties um, I guess now we're uh, we just fall behind Texas County which uh, I never thought we'd ever fall behind Texas County at anything um, but anyway um, I appreciate um, everything that you've done um, we are in Cleveland County we are actually on the uptrend now on on our cases of recovery. We're almost to 90% of recovery. We only had two additional cases today. Um, so we are, we are coming back and it has been, it's been the help of, um, of the citizens of, um, of Cleveland County and also with the governor's office and, and their work. Um, one thing I would also like to thank is the county commissioners. We do run the courthouse um, and, and with partnership with the Supreme Court, the state Supreme Court has done a very good job uh, making sure that all the district courts have been um, have been safe and people that have to either be there for court um, for good reasons or bad reasons. Um, they've been, uh, we've, we've done everything we could to be safe across the state. Um, but I, I'd like to thank um, the, the governor and his office and his staff um, has worked very closely with county commissioners. Um, and uh, the County and Commissioner Association in rolling out the, uh, the federal money that is available at the state for the local governments, and I appreciate that greatly. And for all my colleagues in the cities and the counties, you were sent a letter from, uh, from the governor and Mr. Maisie that was explaining um, the, uh, the, the portal and how to get logged in and how to get an account set up. That is very important that we go ahead and get that done and we start getting that populated with reimbursement requests so that way we know what we're going to be spending and, and what is the need is out there. So I appreciate it, Governor. Thank you, Commissioner Cleveland. Really appreciate it. Love your, uh, your county. As you know, I grew up in Cleveland County, Norman Tiger. And thank you, Mayor. We love, uh, love Lawton as well. You're doing a great job down there with your community. And, uh, the state of Oklahoma is here to support all of our county commissioners, our municipalities, our mayors, uh, to effectively get these uh, dollars uh, out as quickly as possible. Uh, I also want Oklahomans to know that my administration remains committed to strong transparency and accountability in the distribution of all of these uh, CARES Act funds. Uh, this past week, we launched a new page on Oklahoma's online checkbook. Uh, where we will post the latest distributions each day. 
Uh, I'm so proud of our digital transformation team, uh, all those folks that work in that department. Uh, when I took office, our old checkbook online uh, was ranked 47th in transparency, and due to the new technology and the stand-up of our online checkbook, we're now ranked number uh, fifth in the nation, which is top 10, which I'm so proud of that, uh, that team. Uh, so, but our team is also still working to make it more user-friendly, uh, and we'll expand access to the data, uh, which will include information on how money is being distributed and utilized uh, by the local government. So I'm trying to make that very transparent for Oklahomans. Uh, you can go uh, look at this by visiting uh, the checkbook.ok.gov. Uh, uh, I've said all along that my first priority uh, was to protect the health and lives of Oklahomans. Uh, number two was to mitigate the impacts to Oklahoma's economy and get Oklahomans safely back to work as quickly as possible. I'm so proud of the sacrifice that Oklahomans have done. They've done a fantastic job with this, and, and the commissioner uh, just kind of gave some of the stats there in Cleveland County. Uh, but statewide, I like to remind Oklahomans, we have 1,060 people with active cases out of 4 million, and uh, we continue to see the trend lines go down. So we are uh, 25 days into our measurably and safely reopening plan, and we're continuing to see the data move in the right direction. Uh, but it's no time to take our, our foot off the gas by, by no means. We, we, we know that we have uh, coronavirus in our state. It's in every state. Uh, so we have to continue with the social distancing and taking precautions. Uh, but we have to learn how to live with it. And Oklahomans are, are leading the nation and doing that better than, uh, than anybody. So uh, these CARES Act dollars uh, will really allow our local municipalities uh, to recover from COVID-19 to help rebuild their economies. Uh, allow us to better prepare uh, for, for the future. So um, I just wanted Oklahomans to, um, to know that we are going to get through this. We are doing a great job, and uh, we are on our way to becoming a, a top 10 state again. And I'll open it up for uh, a few questions. So uh, we've got a team that will do that, and uh, it's, it's our intent that uh, we're anticipating if not all, most all expenses that are COVID related to be, be uh, reimbursable. So we have 1.2 billion. Uh, we have that split up between the municipalities, uh, between our state agencies, but we anticipate, uh, we don't know yet exactly, that's why we're setting this portal up right now, uh, how many are gonna come in, but from what we've initially uh, kind of targeted, we think we're gonna be able to reimburse uh, all COVID related expenses to the municipalities. So that's being set up right now, what's the timeline of when can the first dollars go out to the first we expect the, uh, the first dollars to go out the first week of June. Uh, so we want all the municipalities to go into that portal and, and uh, set up their uh, username uh, to start submitting their requests. And uh, we expect that to go out by June 1st. That first batch, we're going to close it on June 10th, I believe. is. Uh, and I've got uh, uh, Secretary Bud here to answer some of those more detailed questions if we need him and also have Brandy from OMES. Uh, to get into the weeds if we need to. But uh, we'll, we'll do that first batch and then we'll reassess and then we'll open it up again. Um, so we didn't want to just piecemeal them out. So we're going to do these in, uh, in, in tranches as new, new expenses come forward. So cities could not seek reimbursement from lost revenue assessed tax credit? That is correct. Uh, the federal guidance says uh, you, this is COVID related, but CARES Act is not for replacing lost sales tax revenue or lost revenue at the state level. It is uh, specifically designed to, repl to uh, replenish COVID-related expenses. So new hires, uh, overtime worked, uh, if there's new technology that a, that a municipality had to set up uh, to work from home, uh, anything that's COVID-related on an expense side should be reimbursable. And there's a whole guidance out there that we're encouraging those municipalities to uh, review and make sure that they're submitting the uh, proper documentation to us. Yeah, so we have, uh, right now, uh, I get briefed every single night on, uh, I mean, down to the amount of gloves in the hospitals across the state. So we've got a great team. Uh, I think we're at 208, uh, at least it was yesterday, in hospitals across the state. So, uh, yeah, there's 208 people being treated for COVID across the state of Oklahoma. Um, and again, I remind, reminded Oklahomans, uh, it was never to have zero people in the hospital. 
It was to prepare for the capacity uh, to make sure that we were prepared with PPE. And we have 4,600 hospital beds. Uh, so 200, 208 people across the state is still uh, a downward trend from 560 on March 30th. And again, when we opened on April 24th, when we started our measure, measurable reopening plan with phase one, it's still down from there. Uh, so uh, you, you, you might have a small little uh, ups or downs, uh, but the data still looks really good to uh, continue through phase two. Do you expect all $1.2 billion to be spent, or do you think excess? Or do I think what? You know, that's a good question. Uh, we, we hope we can find a way to get the 1.2 billion here in the state of Oklahoma. Um, I've, I've addressed it with every single state agency. We've had meetings with our uh, CFOs at all the different state agencies to make sure that they are thinking through uh, every COVID related expense. And we've been, we've been having meetings with, uh, with the municipalities, the county commissioners, uh, but we just don't, we just don't know yet uh, what that looks like till we start getting some input and some actual uh, uh, dollars in and some expense uh, things from, from the different departments. I know the health department uh, uh, has only spent, I think, two or 3% of our, of, our, of our money and that was uh, a major department. So we think the 1.2 billion is gonna be able to meet all of our municipalities' needs uh, and, and the state agency uh, cost to fight COVID. Yes, yeah, so the, the, uh, we're really excited. We, you probably saw President Trump tweeted today, uh, you know, congratulating Tulsa on the TIFIA grant for $120 million. That's something we've worked on for a long time, and, and we cut the ribbon on that uh, Gilcrest Expressway. It's, a, it's on the western side of Tulsa. Uh, that'll be great for that community, and it was a public-private partnership that ODOT and Secretary Gatz have been working on for, for some time, and, and uh, um, it's, it's something that, that uh, GATS worked on with the federal delegation, and, and we got that uh, across the finish line here for Oklahoma. Governor, I think that uh, you're always popular in, trying, in terms of trying to have positive uh, employee morale, and I think some people who work in health parks for a long time uh, and have been there would say that the building over there isn't necessarily the brightest and best uh, asset of the state. There are a couple bills in the session to look at purchasing a new office and potentially moving to agencies. Have you been included in on that? Are you part of those discussions? Do you have any guidance on where those things, those discussions stand? Yeah, one, one thing I've learned in, in, uh, since I've been here as governor is the government's not very good at taking care of buildings. Um, so uh, there's a great opportunity in infrastructure around the state of Oklahoma. So we've got a team that we stood up, uh, and some of my team, I, we wanted to we wanted to look holistically at our uh, uh, all of our all of our assets because we had 33,000 Oklahomans working from home in state government over the last couple months. Uh, so we think there's a lot of opportunity right now to relook at how many leases we need uh, to consolidate some of those spaces uh, to get rid of some of those buildings that that might need some significant capital improvements. Um, to move agencies together. I know we authorized the CLO. Uh, we authorized them to go from 3% of their uh, percentage of the corpus that they can use for commercial real estate to 5% this year. So that was something we got across the finish line. So I look to see the CLO to continue to invest in commercial buildings, uh, which will allow some of those old dilapidated buildings and those agencies to move into some of the more modern uh, then we can we can sell some of those assets. So uh, there's a there's a big plan there. Uh, the John Bud and his team, my COO, are, are working on uh, to really restructure and look at how we, um, you know, how we how we have to have office space uh, for our state employees. And, I, and and I think over the next couple of years, you'll see some nice improvements there. Governor evictions started again this week across the state. In mm -hmm. Oklahoma County alone, there's hundreds of them pending. Um, I guess a do you have any interest in using the Health emergency powers to suspend eviction for any longer, and B, if not, give any message to Oklahoma to feel like this is too early to start processing evictions. Well, that good question. That's a uh, really a, ju a judicial issue uh, that we haven't weighed in uh, on, and and uh, ultimately, I've I've told uh, our banking departments and told Oklahomans we need to be uh, really cautious at this time when when so many people are out of work and, and on who you. Uh, just do a lot of, uh, give people the benefit of the doubt. And, and I think Oklahomans, uh, as a general rule, do that very, very well. So I'm not concerned about uh, Oklahomans taking advantage of it. But this is not, 
uh, you know, landlords, uh, you know, landlords might be just one person has a, uh, a duplex. They own a duplex and, and they've got to pay their rent as well. And so uh, that's not something that, that uh, my administration is weighing in, especially as uh, our state has safely started to reopen and we've got, uh, you know, we've got the uh, trying to get folks back to work. Talking about um, testing employees at Seaboard Foods in Texas County. Do you know if those results have come back yet and how many tests positive up there? I do not know. I should get the briefing tonight when I go to the MAC Center. I'll find that out on, on, on the testing, exactly how many of those came back positive. But uh, as you know, we sent our health department up there. We wanted to test all 2,000 employees at Seaboard. And uh, we also set up some temporary housing uh, because one of the problems we had out there in uh, those processing plants. Uh, I think there's 32 different languages spoke uh, in the processing plant. The communal living that uh, some of the folks are living in um, are really uh, more the reason that we've had the outbreak there than actually the precautions we've taken in the plants. Um, so it's something that we're, we're, we're it, it's happy. Iowa, there's a lot of states that are dealing with this um, and we're, we're trying to get our arms around it with contact tracing and also providing some other, um, some other, uh, places for those folks to live as well. But I'll find out tonight exactly how many of those are positive. I, I do know this, last week uh, we had 680 positive cases in the state of Oklahoma and 45% of those came from Tulsa, from Texas County. I know that um, two of the nursing home workers tested positive with coronavirus and it was through contact with workers at Seaboard. Um, and I know that you're trying to test all the nursing homes across the state, and that nursing home was tested twice. Do you know what happened to the results from the first round? I, I don't know the specific results on, on uh, the two there in the, in the nursing home that you're talking about. Just wanted to follow up on Robert's question about who gets to decide, who gets some of the CARES Act grant funding. Um, so you said you have sort of like a panel. Is that the same group of folks that like some of the legislators are on? Are they helping to decide, or is it a different? Yeah, so I think it'll be a, it's a combination. That's why we really set this bipartisan team up the, uh, uh, with the legislative uh, advisory committee. So they'll be there in the decision making process. And then we have different pillars from the different uh, um, areas. We put that CARES Forward team together. Um, so we've got, uh, we've got all the right players on board. And, and again, it's going to be, uh, we haven't approved any right now. So we're going to get all that data in. Uh, over the next couple of weeks and then we'll sit down and we'll uh, get those dollars out and, and like I said before I think the 1.2 billion will be enough to be able to hit those uh, COVID related expenses so I don't think we're going to have to pick and choose between uh, between municipalities. Are you going to detail what those changes to the uh, manufacturing sales tax and uh, we are reviewing that bill as we as we speak. Um, that's uh, something that's on. I think I have till tomorrow to either sign or veto that bill, and that's something that uh, that we're working through with uh, uh, with the House, the Senate, and uh, uh, in industry right now. Do you think it would impact Tulsa's efforts to Tesla? Uh, that's certainly one of the considerations uh, on the table, and obviously. Uh, uh, my administration and, and uh, the Commerce Department has been working really hard to get Tesla across the board. We're not going to let, uh, regardless of what happens with that bill, uh, Tesla and the package that we put together for them, they're 100% safe. Uh, Oklahomans, I'll tell you this, we will honor uh, our commitments. We will never do anything uh, retro that would affect businesses. And we've, if we make a commitment, uh, we'll stick to it as long as I'm governor. So was, was this, you say, well, there's just a lot of misinformation. The, uh, the Tesla obviously was offered that exemption in the package that Commerce sent to them. And then uh, uh, even if the bill is signed, uh, Tesla would be safe under, uh, under the way that we review it. Yeah, you know, the CDC uh, guidelines uh, say that, you know, wear, wear a mask if you, if you uh, cannot, you know, keep your social distancing, but you don't have to wear one if you can keep your social distancing. So to me, that's a personal preference. Uh, if you feel safer in a, in a mask, uh, then, then we, we definitely encourage you to do that. 
Uh, if you can remain social distance, we don't think you necessarily need to have a mask, but that's a personal preference. Uh, I would, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be very cautious about uh, mandating uh, certain things to, to Oklahomans. A lot, of the, a lot of the, I've signed 24 different executive orders. Oklahomans have done a great job of, of following them and they've been uh, guidance uh, on how we think we should deal with this uh, pandemic. And, and uh, again, I'm just so proud of Oklahomans. Uh, I've never had to worry about Oklahomans uh, uh, being innovative and, and social distancing and taking care of their neighbors. That's just who we are uh, in our state and just uh, so proud of the sacrifices they've done. And uh, on a positive note, you know, with phase two reopening, uh, we uh, now some of the s youth sports are started back. And so had a great time on Friday night and in, uh, in the flag football game for my son and being out there and social distancing with other parents. Uh, but it was just great to be out there in the sunshine and, and uh, seeing the kids run around again. So uh, that's, uh, it's great to see kind of life uh, starting to get back to normal. One little more thing back on the list, Mr. Governor. Uh, that Dio can probably feel pretty good in your hands, it seems like, right? Usually a couple of times. Uh, can you speak generally to the, the philosophy behind the, the things you have well, again, um, I was elected to think about things differently. I've never been in politics before, and Oklahomans wanted a business person uh, at the at the governor's seat. So, um, I work for all four million Oklahomans, and uh, not necessarily for these the ten thousanders or ten thousand insiders around this capital. And so, every decision I make is going to be to protect the taxpayer, uh, to think about what is best for the next generation, uh, not the next election. How do we become a top 10 state? The vision is the same. We can compete and win against any other state. We can become a top 10 state in everything that we do. And so that's what drives me. So if I see a bill that is uh, not good for the taxpayer, if I see a bill that uh, uh, is not good for becoming top 10, if I see something that grows bureaucracy and doesn't cut red tape and actually creates more uh, committees or uh, you know, uh, more redundancy in state government, then I'm going to veto it. And so, uh, you know, th that's just basically how we look at it. I have a whole team that reviews those policy things. And uh, if, it, if it doesn't stand up to digitally transforming state government and bringing new technology and, uh, and, 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 and thinking about the taxpayer, and how much money, how much things cost, uh, then I'm not going to be for that. So that's how I think about things. That's why I vetoed uh, some, thing, some things this year. Uh, but uh, again, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's maybe a difference of opinion with, uh, with some of the members of the House, the Senate. And, um, uh, you know, it, it, it is what it is. You know, not at all. Tag agents are so important to delivering services, like our uh, Real ID. We're launching Real ID. Tag agencies are important to deliver that. Uh, but at the same point, uh, technology. I want Oklahomans told me that they want to to access uh, services electronically. So renewing your uh, your tag, for example. Other states, you can do that on your computer or on your cell phone. And so the bill that I vetoed uh, would have moved a, a million dollars from our uh, tax commission because you're, you're doing it online and it would have pushed that out to one of our vendors, which is basically a, uh, one of our uh, uh, wonderful tag agents. It doesn't affect, if you still go to the tag agency, you're gonna get the same uh, services. The tag agency is gonna make, uh, uh, make the money on that. Uh, service. So again, tag agents are integral to how we deliver services, but I'm not going to let just the way we used to do stuff keep us from moving forward with better technology and how other states do it. Uh, the other, the other uh, tag agent bill that I vetoed um, would actually have been more restrictive uh, to um, remove a bad actor, for example. And so over the last 15 years, uh, the tax commission has removed the licensing of 16 tag agents. It's less than a quarter of 1%. So there is no, I mean, it's, a, it's really a, a solution looking for a problem. Uh, there's, no, there's no issue here. Uh, we, we, we love our tag agent friends around the state, had great friends with, friends with a bunch of them, uh, but also uh, things change and adapt and Oklahomans want me to think about the future and how we can deliver services uh, uh, better and digitally. And, and we want the tag agents to be part of that. Sit down and find a way to speak from the calls office. I think last week 
week we were in here and said we were going to go up there. You, you may go up there. <laughs> you know, I, I had a great conversation with Speaker McCall uh, last night on the phone. We spoke for about uh, uh, 30 minutes. Uh, we've texted this morning. Uh, had a sit down with uh, with Representative Wallace yesterday, the Appropriations Chair, and so uh, the uh, <clears throat> I think. Uh, the, the, the hard feelings from the budget are, are, at least from my perspective, are in the past, long gone, and, and uh, uh, I vetoed the budget. They overrode me, which is their prerogative, and, uh, but I keep reminding them they own that budget now, and they've got to explain to Oklahomans uh, whether it was good or bad, and, and we have a difference of opinion on, on how that budget uh, is going to end up playing out, and we'll know when we get back in here in, in December as well, or you know, December will be our Board of Equalization meeting. Uh, but anyway, no hard feelings. I have great relationships with the House and the Senate. Been calling a lot of them today, uh, just uh, taking their temperature on some of the bills and, and uh, et cetera. So. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.